Peace and blessings. Hi, Kev. Peace and blessings. How are you doing? I'm feeling wonderful. How are you? Doing beautiful. I'm doing well as well. All right. Right. Peace and blessings. Peace and Peace blessings, blessings, everyone. Um, it's Amina, and welcome back to our Instagram Live podcast, Unveiling Love, Stories of Community and Social Change. You know, it's where we have a space for Oakland artists and leaders to discuss their defining moments, shaping their efforts and cultivating safety, solidarity, unity, community. You know, and this is part of our Love Over Fear uh, Oakland campaign organized by our family at Interfaith Movement for Human Integrity. And what I really love being part of this campaign is that I can fully be myself. I'm so grateful to be a cultural strategist mm -hmm. on this campaign. I feel I can be myself as a Chinese Muslim artist and I can contribute to what I really love with these guiding principles of of love and i'm celebrated now i don't feel welcomed not only do i feel welcomed i feel celebrated for who i am and it's really reflective of the rich oakland history you know from Vale, east oakland chinatown west oakland these were our sanctuaries we felt a sense of belonging but we had a way of celebrating together and I'm so excited because our guest today upholds these values and is helping to maintain this rich culture. Um, he's a brilliant artist. You can recognize him probably playing at Yoshi's, playing next to Too Short. He performed with the Oakland Symphony, um, music director for Lauren Hill. He performed at San Quentin Prisons. I mean, he's truly using his gift to heal the world as an educator, as an MC, as a pianist, a producer, composer, activist, city of Oakland Cultural Affairs Commissioner. I mean, he's my friend and I value him dearly. Please welcome my guest, Kev Choice. Yeah, thank you for such an amazing introduction. It's, uh, very humbling and an honor to be here. I, you can hear the church bells going off right now in the neighborhood. So. <laughs> No, it's an honor. It's an honor to have you here. You know, I remember just growing up and, and hanging around and, and just enjoying Oakland. I remember seeing you performing in so many different venues. You know, we learn about the Harlem Renaissance, but I truly believe Oakland had its own cultural renaissance. Mm -hmm. And you were definitely part of that. Uh, you've been you've been there contributing with your art and um, mm -hmm. I remember you playing piano and you made me feel like oh my gosh I need to go back and polish up my piano skills you know you're so right. talented but I want the folks to know a little bit about you I had the blessing to understand and get to know you but I'm yeah sure to, with us quick move just so I can get it's a little loud out here forgive me <laughs> I'm gonna just go inside real quick one yeah, second no problem these open streets be loud. <laughs> <laughs> it's the cultural renaissance. We, we hear music everywhere. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I definitely hear the church bell. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you so much for your patience. Oh, no problem. <laughs> Sorry, a little bit come inside you said well no thank you for that and you know it's never too late to get back on the keys if that's something that you um if you used to practice you know we can always pick it back up oh we, we stay students to the music at all times you know? absolutely absolutely it's a form of meditation you know mm -hmm. so, but i had the the blessing to to know you um you're a great friend of mine but i want the folks to Kind of get to know you a bit more. Can you tell us a mm. bit of your background and how, you know, you start to be as an artist and just kind of translating to work of activism? Well, you know, um, it's it's an amazing story of you know first just being exposed to music through my family and through my community growing up here in the Bay Area between Oakland and you know family in San Francisco. Um, started playing piano at like 11, 12 years old. I really just, you know, had a really great teacher at an Oakland public school 
a Westlake, you know, a, a, a African American woman who was classically trained and kind of started me on that path. And um, I just really gravitated towards that instrument and in the pursuit of just getting good at my instrument and being in, you know, being a product also of local, you know, youth programs like Young Musicians Program, which was at UC Berkeley at the time. And students from all over the Bay Area would go there for summer intensives and, you know, getting lessons during the year. And that's really where I like got to develop at a young age, you know, playing classical, playing jazz, reading music, playing in ensembles, singing in choirs. Um, and then, you know, then going to Skyline High School and, um, you know, which was also, this was a very, to me, a bloody time of hip hop in the Bay Area where all of, a lot of classic music was being made. A lot of classic groups were coming out. And, you know, these were my friends. We were all young. We were teenagers, you know, and these, these artists 30 years later are still making incredible music. You know, Souls of Mischief or people like the Loonies, Hieroglyphics. You know, these were people I was just around, you know, riding the bus, freestyle ciphers, f first little studio sessions and, you know, just... So that's kind of like my, my foundation of being in open community, being a product of, you know, youth education, having good mentors and like that, that hip hop, you know, renaissance at that time to me, which, you know, kind of changed the world to me as far as like the impact of Bay Area hip hop. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And how did that guide you to the work of activism and how that could be applied? To well, the activism, the yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, forgive me for not for not mentioning that, but you know the activism is something that I feel like has always been indebted in Oakland community. And um, I remember even in high school when we we marched out because of Rodney King, like we literally walked down Skyline Hill all the way down to MacArthur and in protest, like we was gonna march all the way to City Hall, like to share our voices. <laughs> Um, also just being inspired by also the political hip hop of the time, like, you know, Public Enemy or, or BDP or, or Paris and San Francisco or, or just, you know, reading things like, you know, Malcolm X and, um, you know, speeches of, of Martin Luther King, the civil rights movement, um, uh, learning about the Black Panthers. Like, I feel like I was taught at a very early age that music and activism go hand in hand and, um, that to me was the 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 music and that i uh gravitated towards and also felt like me being a musician was you know i was in high school the year that oakland had its most murders and i seen you know i lost my best friend at 15. i seen the violence in my community and i felt like i needed to be a voice of change and also an alternate path uh that i saw some of my uh, peers go down like doing something positive being able to go to college um, so I also feel like just, just my being, sometimes we think activism is like you got to go out and protest, but sometimes our activism is being a model, uh, being a, a voice of inspiration and, and just, just being a reflection of some, of another alternative of the life that some of us have to live. So, um, yeah, that's kind of what really got me into activism is seeing the things that were happening in my community, the oppression, the violence, the police brutality. Um, the lack of opportunities, the lack of education, like all of those things made me realize we needed a change and I, I wanted to be a, a vehicle of change, even at an early age. Absolutely. And I, mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely mm -hmm. agree with you. The rich, like, cultural renaissance, I would say, from Oakland really impacted mm -hmm. the world. I, I don't mm -hmm. think that's being highlighted enough, so I'm definitely going to push that, that we could, Oakland definitely contribute to that movement. Mm -hmm. um, I know you just dropped your new EP the other day. You had a listening party at the yeah. room. Today, today, it's out today. Today is it's all my love day. I'm calling it all my love day. Yeah. Today is the day that it dropped. You know, and um, it's 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 a beautiful. You know, anytime you can release music into the world as an artist is a sense of accomplishment. And um, my goal for 2024 was liberate the creativity. And, and that means to liberate all the ideas, the things that we have in our minds, the things we work on, and sometimes we hold it up because of, you know, maybe it's lack of resources, maybe it's lack of feeling like it's going to make an impact, uh, maybe it's not knowing how to promote it, maybe it's being fearful of the content, but uh, uh, and also there's a there's a real vulnerability in in, in sharing music. You know, one one to know what people think. We put so much emphasis on how many streams does it get, how many views does it get, mm -hmm. all of these things. And I just wanted to just forget about all that and just give back to the space of just being in the creative process and letting it go and sharing it with the world and then moving on to the next, being able to grow into the next project, which I feel like I have a lot of 
things on deck. So all my love is it's, it's six songs. It's talking about relationships. It's talking about vulnerability. It's talking about healing, and also just exploring different musical genres that I um, that I like to dabble in, whether that's hip hop or jazz or or even Afro beat or soul house, and even like some classically infused things. So. We got to inspire each other. There's so much inspiration in the Bay Area, and I feel like I'm always having this conversation with artists about, well, I don't know how I'm going to put this out, or I don't, know how I'm gonna, I don't know if people want to listen to this, but I'm like, no, our each unique voice is important to share, and that inspires others. So I'm trying to be a, a model of, like, let's let's just give the creativity to the people. Let's liberate our, our creativity and, and get it out to the folks. And hopefully more others will share their stories as well. Yes, and thank you for that. Thank you for encouraging mm-hmm. all of us for all these years just to be ourselves. Mm-hmm. It's not about these outcomes, but really just diving deep into our history, you know, in Oakland that we embrace independence mm-hmm. and creativity and imagination and offering something new. Mm-hmm. Um, so thank you for that. Oh, you, mm-hmm. We talk about the early history of Oakland mm-hmm. um, and how has like the days of early Oakland, how has that changed? And what do you think caused these change? Wow, that's that's a deep a deep question. You know, I've you know, lived in Oakland off and on, you know, you know, all of my life. Um I've definitely seen a change. Um in a lot of ways. You know, Oakland has always been a blue collar city, always been deeply rooted in you know working class people who are deeply connected to to our community and connected to each other um of course you know oakland the oakland that i grew up in was a uh was always diverse meaning there was you know um you know different you know people from different nationalities different from countries i had friends that were panamanian ethiopian armenian let uh mexican vietnamese guatemalan like that was like my natural you know uh circles of, of people that i was in class with hanging out with um but there was also just also a, a much more uh you know the african-american community at the time i was growing up was maybe close to 50 percent of the city which which was a strong um you know had a strong impact and now it's you know down to maybe like 20 percent mm-hmm. You know, as an African American man and as someone who's a part of the African American community, I definitely seen the a lot of my uh, family friends um, just have to leave because they can't afford it here, uh, being forced out because of gentrification or lack of opportunities. Also, sometimes maybe not feeling safe uh, in certain spaces. Um, so there's a lot of factors. Um, there's also more people coming in from other places, which you know it was not as many when I was growing up. It was really more like a kind of a local uh, community of people either grew up in the Bay Area or maybe their families migrated from Texas or down south. But, you know, now we have people from all over, you know, Kansas, Indiana, Chicago, St. Louis, bringing in different energies. Also, maybe not being as closely connected and rooted into the culture of Oakland, um, uh, to the traditions of our community. And so there's maybe some disconnect with people. Like even my building, I live over here near the lake, uh, you know, 10 years ago, I felt like we were very neighborly. We all knew each other. We all spoke to each other. Now there's like, you know, new people coming in who don't have that same, um, those same values about being connected to your neighbors, about knowing, uh, you know, my mom used to send me down the block to to hang out with friends. It's, you know, uh, the woman down the block or walk to the store with the kids next door. Like, I don't feel that same. I feel like the kids in my building probably don't even know each other or they, they don't walk to the store with each other. They don't hang out with each other. So this closeness of community is kind of getting lost when you have people come from other places who don't share that same value and tradition. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's it's a lot it's a lot of ways Oakland has changed. And I mean, we can go from the, the highest places of, the, you know, the way the political landscape is and the way that uh, the infrastructure of our city is being changed by the loss of businesses, sports teams, um, you know, cultural institutions. It's just a lot of loss and shift and transition. And some of it is very, it's, it's very hurtful to us who are, you know, love this community. Even I was just having an argument about this new, you know, idea to change the name of Oakland Airport to some San Francisco Metro Bay Area airport. Um, which you know our identity is being challenged right now like the identity that i know that people value around the world like i've been to switzerland and 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 brazil and cuba and people like oh you're from oakland we love oakland we love the activism we love the music we love the culture but i feel like a lot of that is being challenged right now because 
of the challenges that we're facing in our city and people are trying to almost disassociate themselves with some of the struggles that we're having but we're you know a, a persistent people and we just have to find ways to stay connected and to stay rooted in what really makes Oakland Oakland which is the people in, the, in our, our ability to speak up for what we believe in right it's a lot it's a lot right. it's a lot it's it's deep but you yeah, know we're, it is. we're facing but a lot of challenges right now yeah you know, opportunity. Okay. we keep we keep going and mm -hmm. you know, one of the official models of oakland mm -hmm. is love life oakland. love life yeah yes love life oakland right mm -hmm. i know as a cultural strategist and mm -hmm. as vice Chief of affairs um commissioner you were you know really mm -hmm. a big integral role played mm -hmm. a big role in this life oakland can you tell us a bit about mm -hmm um what what it's about um i know there was some previous events that has happened can you share with us about that are there any future goals well um my role as cultural strategist was you know um a collaboration with uh oh i think the audio went out kev Oh, let me see. Strategist role, which I served in from 2022 to the end of 2023. Um, sorry about that, y'all. My somebody's calling me, but um, it was a great opportunity, you know, to uplift our our um the city's motto of love life and shout out Donna Lacey, who who was uh the big uh. You know, he was the one who initiated that 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 model, you know, inspired by the loss of his daughter, uh, Louise Lacey, whose name is translates into love life and, you know, who was murdered in West Oakland. And, you know, he wanted that to be the, the model of the city. He got it pushed through city council for years. There was no action behind that model. But then as a cultural strategist, I was appointed and hired to kind of give some energy engagement around that. And, um, you know, whether that be creating events like Love Life Week, Love Life Day, whether that be doing things like honoring people in um, community with the, the mayor doing keys to the city, to, to women or, or people who are fighting for uh, violence prevention in Oakland, uh, whether that be doing things like collaborating with, um, you know, different Oakland departments to give resources. We did a, a Love Life Day of Service. Um, we also did the first ever Love Life Commissioners Appreciation Day, where we brought all the commissioners together just to show appreciation for the work they do in service. And really, what what better thing to do is just try to sh spread love. And um, if that's our motto, also like you know, I created the Love Life Acknowledgement, which was something that we would read, similar to a land acknowledgement at the beginning of meetings uh, of um, in city spaces to establish that we're all here to, to to be respectful, to be mindful, to be in love and of service for our city and for our community. Um, and bringing that word love into political spaces is something that, you know, we don't hear very often. So I thought that was very, um, that was my challenge to, to let that word resonate in City Hall and also resonate throughout our community. Right, right. Is it, is it continuing now? How can we support that? Or is there any Which, other event? So, my role is not continued i'm not i'm no longer a cultural strategist with love life there's another cultural strategist who they brought in to to continue that work and honestly i'm not as connected as i was i should get more connected with it and um but there is still a love life cultural strategist and um there's many other cu cultural strategists as well and um other departments doing phenomenal work um throughout the city around different um initiatives like you know the D department of race and equity had a great cultural strategist where they talked about the the oppression of, of african-american people there was a cultural strategist around the lake married around supporting the vendors and community so there was different cultural strategists in different departments and um i was working with office of communications and if you want to support that there is still you know love life uh strategists um in that office of communications Beautiful, beautiful. Love Life Oakland has completely aligned with our Love Over Fear Oakland mm -hmm. campaigns. Please yeah. check it out and, and continue to support these events. And mm -hmm. don't said, Kev, you're still a strategist with your music, said, which is absolutely yeah, thanks. definitely, mm -hmm. you know. And I will say, too, that the goal with me as being a cultural strategist was 
to let community take that model and, and implement it in their own ways. You know, uh, Center for Cultural Power created a grant for artists to create art inspired by the Love Life model. Mm -hmm. We had, you know, I wanted to be able to go into the schools and, and teach the kids to create and have conversations around Love Life. So Love Life is our model. We can all do and activate it in any way possible. So even, you know, love over fear, to me, that is a growth or a connection to being able to love life. And love life is also being able to 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 have equal access to a good life. And I feel like that's an important conversation that we have to have as well. Because we, in order to love life, we have to feel safe. We have to have housing. We have to have resources. We have to have uh, support. And that's, that's a big part of it as well. Absolutely. Right. You know, you spoke a bit about um, cultivating young artists, mm -hmm. mentoring uh, the youth. Mm -hmm. What, I mean, how important it is to invest in young artists, you know, mm. when it comes to the work that we're speaking about. What role do they play? And mm. in what ways can we invest in this? Mm. Well, I feel like it's, it's super important because like I was saying earlier, I was, I am who I am because I, I had adults outside of my family who recognized the talent in me or who saw something in me, who encouraged me, who, put me on a certain path, who gave me certain opportunities, mm -hmm. showed me, you know, um, routes or paths that I could take as, as a musician, as an artist. And I feel like that is super important. And um, I do work in schools with programs like Elevate Oakland. Um, and I have an initiative called Elevate Justice, where I go into the schools, talk about music that's, you know, empowering, talk about being creative, talk about the paths that you can take as an artist if you put in the work and the discipline. And honestly, I, I feel like we need more of us as community members to be in the schools. Like, mm -hmm. even if it's an hour a week, I'm really, next year, I'm really going to try to start this initiative. And if anybody wants to support of all of us as professionals, especially people of color uh, in our community, spending one hour a week in a school, not even having to go to do a presentation. Mm -hmm. It's just like having, it's like when you have your auntie and your uncle in the room, you might move a little different. Or if you got your neighbor in the mood, you know, like the students, these kids need more examples. They need more connection. They need more people that feel like they care. And it doesn't need, it doesn't take like some huge, you know, proposal. It just takes presence. And I feel like we need more of our presence around our youth to help support the parents and the teachers and the school system. Mm -hmm. So let's get one, one hour a week in a school. Of course, going out to a, events that support youth is, there's so many amazing organizations in Oakland that support youth. Um, and supporting those as well is super important. Right. I remember, you know, it was my high school art teacher mm -hmm. that saw, you know, oh, you can paint well, mm -hmm. or, you know, this creativity, you know, whenever you feel like you want to come and paint, come. the doors mm -hmm. open during lunch, mm -hmm. come through. And if it wasn't for my art teacher, I don't think I would do the work that I'm doing right now, you know, mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. confidence to be creative in this work. Mm -hmm. You also mentioned how music art provides a safe space mm -hmm. for people of mm -hmm. all walks of life to come in and celebrate mm -hmm. together and feel safe to be themselves. Mm -hmm. what do you think safety means what does it look like at this present moment for Oakland? Wow. That's deep. You know, um safety. I mean I feel like First and foremost is our environment, like where we have to have a, a, a space to feel safe. And, you know, we have a lot of, you know, folks who don't really have a, a space to claim, whether they're unhoused or, or in a tent or in an environment um, where they like, you know, just common resources um, and common accesses that we all, you know, housing is a right. Housing is a human right. And that is something I feel like first and foremost is an issue. Every 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 day when I go to my studio, I drive down East 12th and I see, you know, these 10 cities or when I go downtown. And I feel like we really have to be mindful of the people in those spaces, treating them as our neighbors, treating them as, uh, you know, giving them the, the same respect and um, resources that any other person should have. Um, I think that's first and foremost. I think second, you know, there's there's a lot that has been happening in our city around you know the conversation of crime of 
of you know of robberies of bipping or things like that um and you know there's that is a, a huge conversation and i feel like we need to be more diligent on getting to the to the to the root of what that problem is whether that's you know certain crime rings whether that's certain people coming from outside of our city um not just saying we need to throw police out there but maybe invest in, in investing more in community programs on the ground people who are talking to the people in the neighborhoods about really what's going on because i feel like it's the full story is not being told about who's committing the crimes where they're coming from what they're doing with the 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 goods when they take them because people on the streets we have these type of conversations like oh when they bip in they taking it and they going over there and they selling it and they flipping it and they coming back so these are conversations that i don't know if authorities or or city government are having but i know that the community is having these conversations and how do we get those people out of those cycles of of crime and and stealing in order to feel like they have to that's their only access to to living a, a healthy life it's like they have to steal or take something from someone else and also where they're coming from you know we don't want that type of activity in our community um and also i feel like the more you know as an artist as a as a creator I feel like the more we have events, the more we have things, positive things in our community, the less there will be, the more we will feel safe. You know, I love events like town nights. I love things like, you know, street festivals like First Friday. I love um, anytime we have venues where there's live music and our art or even, you know, our, our supporting our art spaces where there's visual art, um, like the thing we're doing with creative, you know, Tommy Wong and uh, Civic civic design on the 20th where it's a combination of artists and music it's the street fair it's free like we need more of these things in our communities because those are safe spaces where people come together from all different walks of life and and enjoy the creativity of our uh, community which is our creativity is is not lacking it's, it's thriving mm. and if that's something that is thriving then we need to celebrate that we need to support that we need to invest more in it like our our arts and culture budgets should not be the the least the least funded thing in the in that budget pie that comes out every single year if it's a, if it's less than one percent of the city budget then how are we saying that we're investing in supporting our arts and culture community and our artists and organizations so we have to really be mindful of what we're investing in and i feel like that's how we create safe spaces is investing in community investing in arts and culture and also really getting to the root of where you know the unsafe feelings are coming from and if that's from people being robbed or people being you know things being stolen like let's really investigate that f from a from a street and community level mm -hmm. and not always just to put you know police in spaces after things are happening because we we, we kind of know where it's coming from to some degree that's right that's right you mentioned it a little bit can you repeat that like um currently what does the budget look like how much percentage of the budget is going no, toward the arts and culture you know as an arts and culture commissioner you know i've i've you know every year we have to fight and advocate for the budget mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. a couple of years ago we got one of the first increases in the arts and culture budget in over 30 years and it was increased to about 1.2 million for the whole city of you know this goes out to all individual artists this goes out to all organizations shout out Mieko from oakland symphony i see season here i see you know whether that's oakland symphony whether that's destiny arts whether that's black joy parade whether that's first friday whether that's festivals that's all the funding that will the city will be able to provide now if that's 1.2 million and the overall budget is around maybe three to four hundred million you think about what percentage of the overall raw budget is being put towards arts and culture and like i said when you calculate it it's like less than one percent and um it's it's a travesty for a city that thrives so much on this arts and culture to even have you know politicians always you know we love our artists we love our arts and culture but where's the support and we we do know that oakland is budget challenged every single year and this year we're gearing up for another fight they're already talking about how there's a budget deficit and there's not enough money for this and that but I feel like an investment in our arts and culture is, is an investment in is in business and youth and and artists, musicians, and so many different things. And we should be able to invest more in that. Excuse me. No, yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. Bless you. Thank you for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we need more investment in our arts and culture for our organizations, for our our individual artists, and that's artists of all spectrums. That's that's musicians, that's visual arts, that's dancers. 
that sculptors like that's so many different so many different um art forms that are created here in oakland that we need to support and across demographics right right i, I mean i feel like you know you mentioned a bit about the having the larger conversation so we can mm -hmm. understand these root causes mm -hmm. right how do we create these conversations you know, I, I know you talked about festivals and community gatherings are there other ways that we could encourage maybe in an interpersonal level mm -hmm. you know maybe um what ways do you think that we can have more of these conversations? What I've been um, noticing too is a lot of us are like trying to fight the same battle. Yeah. Whether that's, you know, supporting, you know, people who are impacted by violence or supporting, you know, young women who are on the, um, you know, on the, on the streets or supporting our youth. But I feel like there's a lack of wanting to collaborate you know, and we're also fighting for the same small, you know, pool of funds. Mm. So I feel like the more organizations and, you know, these nonprofits and, and community leaders really need to have more united conversations. Like I want to create a summit, even with music educators. Like I feel like educators in our city don't even have enough. There's too many like, okay, this organization over here, this organization over here, all fighting for the same group of kids to come to their program. And why can't we find a way to be more collaborative to support to support the youth and do it together? Maybe that's even getting grants together. Maybe that's having more events together. Um I love I feel like some of my the greatest work that I've done as a cultural affairs commissioner is when we had the the black and Asian solidarity conversations and you know talked about the unity between you know black and Asian communities historically and kind of reinvigorated that conversation to where now we have you know a lunar new year and black history month celebration together at the same time and I'm like why aren't we doing that across all you know uh cultures in Oakland where there's you know, Latino, there's Mexican, I mean, uh, Latino, there's African, there's Asian, there's Euro, European, like all coming together in, in, in unity around the issues and mm -hmm. celebrating our culture as well. Like, I feel like it's, there's too many silos, there's too much separation. And I see that also in the, in the nonprofit and the activism world, like this organization has their agenda, that organization has their agenda, but we really need to be having more unified conversations. And um, that could be a model for our, our city as well, because I feel like our city politics could work better together as well. Mm, that's right. I mean, that's that's the rich history of, of the Bay Area, right? I know that mm -hmm. youth organization mm -hmm. from San Francisco, mm -hmm. town, right, the Red Guard Party, mm -hmm. uh, they worked with the Black Panthers. Exactly. They inspired mm -hmm. and, and educated on certain aspects of the community. Mm -hmm from each other in so many ways so mm -hmm. we can bring back that collaboration and i think mm -hmm. artists play such a role in this cultural revolution mm -hmm. thank you kev you dropped so many gems and wisdom and insight in this conversation and for those um on the live that have any questions for kev this is the time to type it in the comment section i always ask this to my guests um if we were to unveil love, did a public presentation and removing the veil of what love looks like, what what is what does she or he look like, right? Like, what does love look like at this moment in time? Mm. And what does love look like? Mm. That's such a man. That's such a beautiful question. And I mean, I feel like it looks. It looks like so many things and so many things are, are coming to my mind. But I feel like, when do I feel love the most? I feel like love to me is it's about connection. It's about, it's the most authentic form of connection that we have. And the more we, we see each other for who we truly are without, you know, labels, titles, color, race, age, gender, nationality, communities, neighborhoods, gangs, whatever. When we see each other as as human spirit, as as energy, as vibration, as like love is who we are in the, at the center of our being. Like I feel like love to me is being and seeing seeing that true essence in every single being to me is what love looks like. Like looking at every single person that you see and, and feeling a connection to them. 
and then finding ways that you can connect deeper and maybe there's things that can help enhance your your connection whether that's you know having conversation or whether that's sharing ritual or whether that's you know sharing traditions or sharing meals you know food all these things that are also very much cultural um but to me it's yeah it's, it's about seeing the being and feeling that energy between each other as as humans um to me that's what love looks like it's like looking in someone's eyes and being like i see you i appreciate you i appreciate where you're from i feel like i can learn from you i feel like we can build and grow together like i feel like we have we can accomplish anything together it's like when you see someone and you like you 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 uh you you express that 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 true uh, appreciation of who they are right. that they're being without, without without any any uh resistance of like i say looking at color or or age or anything so if i look in your eyes be like yeah i appreciate you i love you i'm learning from you we're building to me that's what what love is and that's what we need more of for sure yeah and can I say your music, your work reflects these guiding principles? I just, you know, from the way that you add elements of jazz, of hip hop, of classical music, and you put it all together and it gives such a, a unique um, art form. And mm -hmm. I think that when it comes to love, that's what we're doing. We're, we're just putting all these pieces together to create a new way. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah, and so I want folks to know how can they get your new EP? Where is it at? Mm -hmm. Can they listen? To they can listen. So, you know, wherever you listen to music, you know, whether that's, you know, YouTube or Spotify or Apple Music or or Amazon, like wherever you listen to music, it's, it's available today. Um, I have, you know, two singles that I release videos to. Uh, one is a song called Feel What I Feel when I shot that video in Cuba. So make sure you go on, you know, YouTube and check that out. Follow Kev Choice TV. Um, but yeah, wherever you listen to music at, um, it's it's available today. Um, I'm going to be sharing a lot of things on um, my IG page. So make sure you follow just about some of the behind the scenes process and also just thanking all the amazing, you know, contributors and collaborators, collaborations on the project. But yeah, it's available yeah. today everywhere, everywhere in the world. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I'm honored. I'm honored that we can do this IG live while. You know, yeah, this is beautiful. I appreciate it for sure. Before you go, I want folks to also know how we can join in on the event. I think that you're collaborated. You collaborated with uh, Civic Design Studio, right? When is it? Yes. That event is going to be on April 20th from 12 to 5. Um, we're doing the Elevate Justice stage. Elevate Justice stage in collaboration with Elevate Oakland. This is going to be on 9th in washington so it's like right there in old oakland we're like you know blocking off two streets one side is going to be all vendors with art and and goods and crafts and activities for the kids and family and the other stage is going to the other side is going to be a stage where i'm going to be having different youth groups from mainly oakland's all oakland schools like youth performers doing everything from poetry to dance to like a big band from one of our, our great middle schools um in oakland roosevelt middle school so yeah and this is all just really supporting giving the youth opportunities to perform uh to be celebrated and um and also just to collaborate with each other as well so it's it's gonna be a beautiful afternoon yes april 20th uh 12 through 5 old oakland ninth and uh ninth and clay in washington right there family make sure you join make sure you don't want to miss this and mm -hmm. i cannot wait to join you and continue to contribute to whatever that you're doing thank you so much kev for all your work oh, thank um, you for having me this has been a beautiful conversation i appreciate you for sharing this space and, and offering this uh conversation and um and i look forward to continuing to support you as well so all oh, praise so, uh, may allah bless you thank you so much have a safe blessed day everyone and we'll see you in the next episode yeah bye everyone i love you thanks Please. Peace. Peace.